Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Yorkshire pudding. That's right, as a child growing up, I loved pudding. So it was a little bit of a shock to me when I came across Yorkshire pudding, mostly because it wasn't pudding. But then I learned how the British people call almost everything pudding, including sometimes even actual pudding. But anyway, while not the sweet dessert it might sound like, the savory pastry cooked in rendered beef fat is incredibly delicious and super simple to make. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with a very basic batter, which will begin with four large eggs. And what we'll do here is toss in a nice big pinch of salt, and then whisk these vigorously for a few minutes until we have something that's light in color and very frothy. And hopefully looking a little something like this. And then what we'll do once that's been accomplished is stop and add our flour, just regular all-purpose flour, plus some whole milk, and then we will continue whisking until the mixture is extremely smooth and lump-free. And yes, you can definitely use a blender for this, but then you'll have to clean it. Plus, you don't get the exercise from stirring manually, which according to my calculations will burn as many calories as one of these Yorkshire puddings contains. Although I should mention I'm basing that on no facts or actual studies or tests, but simply on feelings, which apparently these days is all you need. But either way, like I said, we're going to mix this until completely smooth and lump-free. And what you should be ending up with is a very, very thin batter that will just barely coat the back of a spoon. And by the way, if you do this and you see little chunks of flour on the back of the spoon, keep whisking. And that's it. Once our batter is done, we can go ahead and transfer that into some kind of pourable container. At which point we have a little bit of controversy. Okay, some folks say you can use this straight away, while others insist it must be refrigerated before you use it. Which I think is probably not a bad idea. Although, truth be told, I have tried it both ways and didn't notice a huge difference. And then once that's set, we can move on to the next step, which is to cook a prime rib, or any kind of fatty beef for that matter, since traditionally it's these drippings in which we cook our Yorkshire pudding. And what I did was strain that into a bowl, and once refrigerated, it's going to look like this. All right, very light in color and quite hard and firm. And then if we're not using it fresh right after we roast our beef, what we'll have to do is go ahead and warm this up, which I did in the microwave, to get it back to its liquefied form, at which point we can use that in whatever pan we're going to use for this, which for me is just going to be this basic muffin tin. And how much exactly depends on who you talk to. All right, some people think like a teaspoon's fine, while others will fill this like a quarter of the way up. All right, personally, I go with about a tablespoon, but suit yourself. I mean, you are, after all, the bojo of which way to go. But I will say that the more fat you use, the more flavorful these are. Not to mention the exteriors are going to get a little crispier. And then besides just spooning some of that in, we will also take our finger and grease the sides and top as well. Which reminds me, try to use a nonstick muffin pan for this. Okay, I actually don't have one, and I'm not sure why. But the nonstick are a little safer, as these can tend to stick a little bit at the bottom. Although it's usually not too bad, and you can fairly easily pry them out. But I thought I'd mention it anyway, just in case you have a nonstick. And then what we'll do as soon as those are greased is go ahead and transfer those into the center of a 400 degree oven for about 10 to 15 minutes, or until our rendered beef fat is smoking hot. And no, we didn't forget to put the batter in. All right, one of the secrets to Yorkshire pudding is to add the batter into the really hot fat. So as soon as that comes out, we'll go ahead and pour our batter in. As quickly as possible, by the way which is why I'm not going to have time to change the camera angle. And we're going to fill these just about past halfway. And then once those are filled, we'll go ahead and add whatever else we have left and distribute it here and there wherever we think it's needed. But don't take too long, like I'm doing here, because we really do want to get these back in the oven as soon as we can, which is the last and final step. So once those are set, we'll go ahead and transfer those back into the center of our 400 degree oven for about 25 minutes or so or until beautifully browned and extremely puffed, at which point we will immediately take a knife and poke a hole in the top of each one to release the steam. Okay, some of them are going to form a natural vent, but for the ones we don't, we will make sure we poke a hole to release the steam. Otherwise, what will happen is these cool, as a vacuum will form, and they will kind of get sucked in and shrunken down, which they will sort of anyway, but by poking that hole and releasing the steam, they will not collapse as much. And that's it, we're going to want to serve these as soon as we can. And I'll go ahead and taste one of the smaller, less impressive looking ones that did, as predicted, stick a little bit at the bottom. 
And by the way, if you use a spoon, you could get that loose in like two seconds. But if you want it to take much longer, go ahead and use the point of a small knife. But anyway, I got it loose and tore in for a taste. And these really do have such an interesting texture, since the outside is kind of crusty and crispy, while the inside stays more tender and custardy. And yes, this was way too hot to eat, but I did it anyway. And you really do want to serve these as fast as you can. Okay, traditionally right next to your meat, smothered in whatever gravy or sauce you're using. Which, because I'm doing this on a different day, I did not have, but wish I did. But anyway, I went ahead and tossed those in a basket so I could take some pictures. Of course, placing the best looking ones on top. And then went in for another taste, because even plain, these are very, very good. So that is your basic Yorkshire pudding cooked in a muffin tin. But if you want, you could do the exact same procedure, but use a larger popover pan like this, with twice as much batter in it, which will give us the same product, only much larger and more impressive looking. So if you do have one of these popover pans, that's a great way to go. Oh, and by the way, just for fun, I ended up cooking one more batch in the popover pan, but I did not poke the holes to release the steam. And as you can see after just a few minutes, that vacuum created inside while these cool pulls everything inward into a much denser, more compact pudding. Okay, it's sort of similar, I guess, to what happens in space with a black hole. Or as they call it in Britain, black pudding. But anyway, just a little bonus footage in case that happens to you. And it really won't affect the flavor. You'll just lose that beautiful cavity inside. Speaking of which, if you have any of these things left over, especially the bigger versions, they are perfect to open up and fill with some kind of beautiful meat salad. In my case, some cubed up leftover prime rib that I dressed with some mayonnaise and sour cream and horseradish and chive and black pepper and a little pinch of salt. And there was one other thing. Oh yeah, a touch of cayenne. And I went ahead and finished that off with a little black pepper. And that, my friends, was just a magnificent sandwich-like experience. And by sandwich, I think I mean pudding. But anyway, that's it. My take on Yorkshire pudding. Whether you're roasting a prime rib for the holidays and want to give these a try with the rendered fat or do them with some kind of equally delicious fat, I still really do hope you give these a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.